Hello, I am Vladimir Myers. My legal name is Jordan, but I go by Vladimir for reasons you can ask for after the talk. All right, so about myself, I'm a junior studying computer science at DePaul. That's where you are right now. It's a great program. And I work at a startup company called Vertical Data, and Greg Brewster is an associate professor here, and that's who I work under. So I'm also the product developer for Acre, and because I am their only programmer, I like to say that I'm also, that also makes me the director of research and development. So that's a cool title. All right, so what is Acre? You have a lot of the talks here have been talking about how to classify numeric data. We actually work more with text-based data, and so we use, you can see, have documents, emails, social media, different things, and then we use we categorize it based on training and then testing, and then you get filtered and categorized data. And so there's a good visualization. And so, so what, you may be asking? Uh, you can use this to classify literally anything. There are a lot of use cases, and one of them is digitizing records. Uh, a lot of people have you know, paper documents, and you don't want to you know, search for it by yourself and so, and it takes a lot of money to have people classify it and so we can take uh, some documents that have been classified, train on that and then we can classify the rest of them. Can also analyze customer feedback. One of the features we've been asked about is that if you have, uh, like on social media where people post their reviews or something, you want to know when customers are pissed off and so, here we can have an extension where you can, it will notify you or notify customer assistance whenever someone is getting so mad that they're threatening to sue you. All right, and then another case is monitoring social media. You wanna know what your competitors are up to, what people are saying about your company, or if you wanna, if you're like a stock trader or something, that's something you would want. And so how does it actually work? And so we use uh, document term vectors, which is, it kind of stores how frequent, uh, how frequent words are used in a document or a category. And so it, one way to visualize that is by looking at word clouds. And so the bigger the word, the more frequent that word is. And so when you're training, you just kind of average out all of the document frequencies. And then for classifying, you just compare those document frequencies to all of the categories and see which one it is most similar to. And so here's a full example. You have, let's say, you've trained categories for social media and data, data analytics, and then you want to classify this document you found online that's a tech article. And so it no you notice that so the word social appears frequently, but the word data appears a lot more, and so that's why it would get categorized as data analytics. And so does it work? <laughs> the big problem with uh, like text analytics in general is that English is such an ambiguous language and then categories are not always well defined. So sometimes it's kind of hard to get good accuracy. And so actually some of our competitors focus more on defensible compliance, which means that uh, if you, like there's a lot of regulatory, especially with the Freedom of Information Act. And so if your company gets sued for not following it correctly, they can go to the courts and say, hey, we tried, we have this software that will do it for us. But we have a bit higher standards at Acre to talk more about that. And so will machines ever kind of beat humans? And so that's kind of, I imagine if you're here, you'd think the answer is yes. But here's a good case, a good case study I like to talk about. And so Yahoo, it's apparently a search engine that in the past, uh, they actually had humans go and classify the documents themselves. Like they would actually write up a description for it. And then, you know where the story is heading, Google comes in with their algorithm where they have uh, kind of the websites voting for others with their uh, links, and then that produces a much better result. And so what happened? Google made a ton more money than Yahoo, as you can see with my graphic. And then, so we would like to be the Google of text analytics. And so our approach for that is kind of having human machine teamwork. And so we have kind of expert it's a cross between expert systems and machine learning. And so uh, a lot of these software are actually like focused more on data scientists and stuff, but we actually, our target user are just experts in the field. So if you're a legal expert, you can actually kind of 
help program the system to make it work better for you. And so one way you can do that is rules-based classification. So you kind of define a set of rules like that will actually definitively classify based on if the rules are matched. And then if, it, if no rules will match, then that's when it falls back on the machine learning algorithm. And so now I want to talk about what are my personal experiences with working at a startup. You can see maybe some of you are familiar with this, these phases of a startup. And so one thing is very important, a lot of people have stressed this, is that it's very important to unit test. And actually, I found that it lets you code a lot faster, actually, even though you're writing more code, just because you're making sure that stuff works and you're not spending all your time just trying to figure out like, what actually happened. Another important thing is object-oriented programming lets you really, lets you be a lot more flexible with your code. Kind of lets you just be able to swap out things more easily and then use modules wherever possible. This is actually a lot different than the way DePaul teaches us. They kind of tell us like, oh, they explicitly forbid us from going and finding other modules. And I think really using modules and that's one of the main strengths of Python, just how many modules they have, and it lets you do be a lot more productive. And again, please unit test your code. We have had a lot of issues. We actually used to have like this other develop we contracted out to this other developer, but his code he apparently didn't test because it just didn't work. But that worked well for me because they gave the contract to me now. And so just more general in startups, this is what I learned more about startups. And it's important to be flexible because you never really know what the customer will pay you for. And so we actually, we were kind of going like the big data route, but our first customer actually just wanted a kind of a small command line tool that you can integrate into other systems. And so we were not expecting that. And it's important to assert yourself, especially a lot of startups don't really like they don't always have a lot of money, and so it's important to make sure that you assert yourself. And after watching the work, work, money, money talk, I think I'm going to ask for a bit more money. And it's hard. So I, you have to be cheap, you have to be good, and you have to be fast, because there's a lot of competition, and you really need to get in there. And it's also I'm also, being their only programmer, I don't really have a mentor to really look up to, but good thing I'm good at self-directed work. So some things I learned about myself is that I like programming from the ground up. It's also different from DePaul. At DePaul, they'll really give you like a partially completed project and tell you to finish it. But I really enjoy kind of starting from scratch because it lets you define the architecture yourself. And I also like being involved in the design phase. We recently had a board reading meeting at my company. And I really enjoyed like kind of throwing out ideas out there and really talking about the direction you want to take the product. And then to the, I connect very well with this graphic because it's just so much like kind of feeling like you're over in the, your head, but you know you can really adjust to it. And I think that's a really fun way to really push yourself. All right, and so uh, our website is verticaldata at weebly.com. And it was under development when I wrote this presentation, but our team pulled together and did an all-nighter, and now it is finished. If you'd like to see it, then you can contact some of our officers or myself. All right, any questions? Let's thank the speaker first. <laughs> questions? Clients. clients, and so uh, we have one client that kind of wants to integrate our software into some other package that he's doing. I can't say too much about it, but uh, yeah, that's our first client, and then we're looking for some others. So, any other questions? Let me ask one. The original code was that also in Python before you took over? No, the original code was using .NET, and so. <laughs> That might be one of the reasons. Yeah. Any more questions? OK, let's thank the speaker again.